Welcome back to OmniFactory. Today we're going to be getting on with some fluids, in particular chlorine. So I've got a few comments from a previous episode saying, yep, chlorine should be fairly simple if we just go with uh, salt rather than we're just trying to find a renewable way around it. We can get more by salt really quite easily. So if we just have a look for rock salt ore, or rock, rock salt, uh, there we go, rock salt. And uh, we should be able to buy that with just Omni pennies. So one, one nickel essentially will get you um, enough of that. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to actually use that particular. I didn't want to use that, that grid. Let's just do it this way. So full stack of rock salt ore. Now we're going to go pop upstairs and get that to start being processed. And we can do that in the existing advanced macerator. This is just going to output straight away into our system. So we don't have to worry about its output. And that will take a little bit of time, so we just needed to get it started while we do some other stuff. So just to give you an idea of what the rock salt ore would do, and we're going to go with a more extensive processing um, system than we previously had. If we have a look at this, we put it into a pulverizer, i.e. advanced macerator, sometimes we'll get salt. And that's great, we can use salt. Sometimes we'll get stone dust, and most of the time, well, in fact, all the time, we'll get six crushed rocks, well, rock salt ore. However, what we haven't really done before is gone into ore washing. Now, if we wash that ore, we'll go from crushed rock salt ore into purified, and we'll also get three tiny piles of salt, which um, every three of those we process. So every two, uh, if so yeah, uh, we'll get two for every basically ore that we get. We'll get two piles of salt. Not a 14% chance, two piles of salt for every one. So for a full stack, that will be 128 salt. And uh, yeah, we we're, we're laughing pretty much. We'll also get some stone dust and other stuff anyway. So we're going to need to craft one of these ore washing plants. Haven't done that previously. But as you can see, it doesn't require medium voltage, which means it's quite a cheap thing to actually make. And then we can take the purified rock salt ore and we can go through another stage. So we can go and pulverize it again put it back through a macerator, in particular an advanced one, so we end up with two outputs. And this will give us borax, and if it follows real life, borax is generally used as a, a flux when melting things, as well as a um, purified pile of rock salt. So <laughs> we're going to get two salt eventually, and then putting it through a centrifuge of any kind will get us rock salt and yet more tiny piles, but this time of borax dust. And then rock salt, as far as I understand, it can be dealt with in the same way that we use salt. So we can put it into an electrolyzer, either salt or rock salt, to produce chlorine. So if I just go to chlorine itself, and we're in the electrolyzer already, so we can use rock salt, or we can use regular salt, and we'll get sodium uh, or potassium out of each process. Okay. Uh, we can go via soda light, but yeah, not going to worry about that. And we also get an output of chlorine. And for each process, they're both, again, low voltage. So it should be straightforward. They don't need any liquids. It's nice and easy to actually get uh, uh, rock salt into potassium and chlorine, or indeed sodium and chlorine. So that's uh, all good so far. So all we need to do really is just build those uh, particular you know, machines. So let's just take a look at the ore washing plant. It's probably going to require a pump, and I hate crafting pumps. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Uh, if you haven't already crafted so well, you should have already crafted some at this point, but if you have a look at all washing plant. Oh, it just requires a motor. motor. Okay, it still requires the rotors. That's it. Ah, I hate rotors. This is why I hate rotors. <laughs> the default recipe requires a hammer, a file, a screwdriver, and, and the screws. Uh, we can go with assemblers to make them, however. I think that's what I'm going to have to go to. I, I just hate the, 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 I hate this recipe. <laughs> just because you have to keep basically filling these up or repairing them. Uh, so that was our manual sort of route for doing that. So the tin ring we can get from the extruder. I haven't really made an extruder, so we, again, we will need to generate more um, machines. However, this is 48 EU per tick, so that if that isn't already medium voltage, in fact it is because there's, <laughs> there's only advanced extruders uh, available, then yeah, we're going to have to make some of that. So before I go anywhere, what I think I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to make another assembly machine and another fluid extractor. That definitely needs a pump, and that's why I was hating the pumps, uh, just because the pump recipe is uh, basically this. So you need rotors and paper rings and other bits and pieces, uh, which I don't always have around. So I need to get the system to actually craft those for me, but that needs more assembly machines and around and around you go. So uh, yeah, so what I'm actually gonna do is a new fluid extractor, new assembler, and we'll then set those up to deal with um, 
deal with further crafting recipes because we only need I, I, I don't want to I want to have this dedicated to tin or alloy uh, uh, soldering alloy uh, for anything else and we can get those circuits out there just fine well technically I could get rid of it now but yeah, I'm not going to worry about it I did get another thing between the episodes saying yes if you run out of, of uh, space here this is one I didn't know in many years of playing with AE2 I didn't know you could do this apparently if I I know you could change this just we can just change this to having an arrow pointing down you've got to find out which which arrow it is uh is it that way yeah it is it's the opposite direction from the one you want you can always do this to make sure it's pointing at the machine already knew that and that it doesn't really matter in this case because they're always only connected to one machine but if you had let's say another machine like in this space here then yeah you have to specify the direction what i didn't know is you could just stack another interface on top of that apparently and then you can um, put more patterns in that one and it will act as if it's also connected to this machine i'm really happy if that's the case i haven't tried it yet if it is good if not that's a shame <laughs> you can of course put another interface behind here in this block space and move this cutting machine around and stuff like that so you could have one on each side but you know if you can just stack them vertically that's good just to extend the interface anyway I'm on with some more machines and we'll come back once we've got uh, through to some salt and I can process a full stack of salt ore manually, at least with that until we get to the ore washing stage. So I'll go make a few of those and we'll come back once I'm at, you know, salt and rock salt, maybe. And I thought I'd just test that setup because I was just a little bit concerned I hadn't figured it out before and there's a, probably a good reason for it. Um, basically, as you know, the interfaces will pass through everything we have. We don't have to worry about cabling them individually. You can do this and it works perfectly well for anything in these. However, it seems when it's in this mode, it can't do that. So if you do want this mode to work, you're just going to have to add extra cables. Not a big deal, just it won't work without it. So let me just show you what's in here. Well, I've just put the red alloy plate in there. OK, and red alloy, you can see it's here. We can make it. And if I just remove the extra one connection from up there, OK, and we pop back. See, no red alloy plate anymore. So you have to explicitly cable to each interface when they're in this pointing mode. And I guess it sort of makes sense in that if it goes to here, then it can't go backwards. Um, so that's one way to remember, it, I guess. But yeah, that does allow you to extend the interfaces quite a bit more. Uh, so I'm going to be just fine with that, I think. Um, did I get everything I needed to get make here? I think I did. For now, I'm just going to take this back because I need this interface. <laughs> um, where is it? You just put you back there and grab you back. Because we've got the ore washing plant here, and this is going to do the work for us. In fact, we could get away with even without a... Um, well, no, we still need an interface of some kind. Because even though we want to do this automatically, if we use an export bus or something like that, that will, uh, that will work to export all the rock salt ore out. But we actually want it to feed back into the system anyway, so uh, maybe I'll just do this on demand for now. So let's just put that there, and then we can just create this. So we've got a whole chain back again, and uh, this I think is already set to output. So if we just put that in here and put it there, it needs water. So downstairs we have the water source that we have. This is a very slow one, but it, it still works fine. And we have some cable down there. So if we just go and dig this out then we can just go and put some cable down we want to get a fluid import bus and that's already set as an output then we just cable it up okay and we should start getting water in our system uh i'm out of blocks <laughs> that'll do for now i'll replace it later yep we can see it's already draining and that's pretty good fine so in our system we should now have water we do good now one of the points i thought each fluid block because i hardly usually use these fluid cell the storage cells are up here i thought the fluid cells were going to be 63 types as well no unfortunately i was wrong sorry about that it is just five types 
still better than one type, which is what you get with a single block. So it's it's a lot more efficient in terms of space. You know, we can get 5, 10, 15, well, 10 types, so 50 in one block basically here. And uh, that's still more than good enough for me to use the system, but just bear in mind, it's not going to sort of store 63 different types of fluids. That'd be really nice if it did. Regardless, we now have water in our system, which means we can just export it wherever we like otherwise. So if we just go back here, there is an oil washing plant there. So if we just select a fluid export bus back here, we should be able to just cable that up as well. And then we can then basically configure this as water. And you can grab water or anything else out of your system with the usual bucket approach directly from your system. So you don't have to worry about uh, Go and finding the original source once you've got everything set up. And we're going to export water from you, which should start everything running, hopefully, once it reaches the amount that it needs to start processing. So uses of that means all washing is one bucket, basically. And there it goes. It's going to start actually running. We've already got a lot of that rock salt going. 383. So I'm just going to grab a stack and we'll just dump it in here and let it just process in the background without me having to do anything, it's all auto supplying. And we can do the same thing anywhere else where we want water, for example, like here on this autoclave, we can put the same thing behind there instead of that infinite water source. So yeah, lots of tidying up we can do with that. So the rest of the oil processing chain, we're already getting tiny piles of salt and they can be turned into regular salt, which is good. And the rest, of course, will need to be processed, but we don't need to worry about it just for the on-camera stuff. We can just get our salt, go upstairs to our electrolyzer, and of course we can set up an automated chain for this, but if we just go put salt in here, it's going to split it off into the two products. Now the output for this is set to the top, and that's a bit of a weird thing because we've got both a solid and a gas or liquid output. Now at the moment, as far as I know, or at least <laughs> all I've been able to manage is to output them both to the same side, being the electrolyzer, uh, sorry, to electrolyze at the interface. But um, that's a little odd in that I want to be able to select the, the, the fluid output on a different side than the, uh, the other output. Can't seem to find a way to do that, but it seems that we don't necessarily need it in that even if it's not got an output side, the fluid input bus seems to be able to pull that liquid in even on the non-output side. So that works regardless. It's just nice if we had an auto eject button independent of each side. So if anyone knows if there is a way to separate the two auto outputs, um, do let me know. But otherwise that is going to go there and then our system should have chlorine in it. I may need to craft more, uh, more fluid storage at this rate. This has got three or five types and there we have methanol, hydrogen and well, uh, chlorine. There is an occasional biomass, but we have the chlorine there in three buckets worth. Now the oil washing is not a fast process, <laughs> as you can see, well, mainly because I don't have the water to the water supply to actually do that. So I need to craft another one of those dense infinite water supplies. Regardless, uh, we have got enough salt for this to actually keep going. You'll see now we have eight buckets, which is good already, but we can do better. Uh, we're going to need some other stuff. We're going to need to go and electrolyze some redstone. So let's get that going as well. But before we do that, I need more fluid storage because I just crafted it a 1k drive because just it's on three types now, occasionally four when biomass pops in because that's being basically immediately exported back out. And then um, further along, we're going to want other fluid types. So we want an extra five types and that will well, at least how much um, how much storage? 104 4k. Uh, that is well, we've got 16 buckets there and eight buckets there. So yeah, we're going to have lots and lots of buckets capacity, at least for the meantime. So why don't we just go and get the next product we need? We need mercury. And apparently redstone is part mercury. I'm not reading that chemical formula out. No. All I'm going to do is dump this in and it's going to start processing a 10 at a time. So I need to get rid of four of you. 10 at a time, it's going to process redstone. It's going to take it a little while to actually do that. But if we have a look at what we can do with redstone, in the electrolyzer, it exports a few different things. We get mercury directly out from 10 redstone. We get three buckets of mercury. Good. We're also going to get silicon dust. We're going to get pyrite dust and we're going to get ruby dust. And of course, pyrite dust, we should be able to reprocess into 
Yep, sulfur and iron. So redstone is renewable, remember? So we can get renewable sulfur and renewable iron, although we're already getting renewable iron, straight out of this whole chain. So electrolyzing it twice will get us to sulfur, which we can then produce sulfuric acid with. Yep, it should be straightforward. And we're using that in other, in other methods already. Good. Right, so that is going to produce us some mercury, and it's going to export out the back, just like before. So mercury should start appearing in the system. It's going to be three buckets per ten, so that's going to be like... Uh, so 60 is 18 buckets. That'll do to get started. And that takes us on to the quest in the quest book for this hypochlorous acid bucket. Yep, it's not the same thing as hydrochloric acid. So if we have a look at that... That's just going to need a chemical reactor, which we can make some water, some chlorine, some mercury, but you are going to need 10 buckets of chlorine for it. Also, just one bucket of mercury. So it's like a, a very small addition, but for that you get 10 buckets of hypochlorous acid. If instead you just go with chlorine and water, you have your chlorine on the other side. Instead of getting 10 for 10 and a bit of mercury, you get one instead of two for the input. You do get some hydrochloric acid out of it, diluted of course, and you can put that into a distillery straight away and that will, depending on what you tell it to do, it'll either get rid of the acid and to produce water, or it'll get rid of the water and produce extra, well, in fact, half as much acid. So it'll, it, you know, it'll have wherever you go. But we don't need to worry about that. We just want this quest to get done to get started. So we're going to go with uh, a uh, chemical reactor, I think. Can I already make the system automatically create that for me yet? No, I haven't coded it in the system. Why don't we just try that? We're always in the need of chemical reactors and assemblers. So it's useful to have them. Uh, we should be able to get away with a low voltage one. And this will probably say I'm missing stuff, but that's not, that's not a new thing. Uh, you can see we're already generating lots of different recipes here. I've gone on to medium tier for like the pistons and the motors, just not the pumps yet, which is uh, where it would really help. Uh, where is it going to go? Chemical reactor. There we go. So craft. What am I missing? Um, just the tin rotors. Remember I said I hate the tin rotors? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do have the recipe in here. It's in this one. Uh, tin ring and then just screws. So you can just make a few of these and uh, it, it doesn't take much effort to make a few screws. One, two, three, three. And then we can make a rotor if I give it the right things. Yep, one rotor. Got my screwdriver back and that should be enough to make me a chemical reactor. One chemical reactor, please. There it goes. It's just going to go ahead and start. And do we have more salt while it's at it? Yeah, we do. We have uh, enough for three more salt. But as you can see, that's the pile of purified and our unpurified. I put another stack in, so it's got 600 to go and it's done 41 yet. So, yeah, there's there's plenty of that we actually need. However, I'm going to need the salt because it's just uh, it takes two at a time for the salt. So we've got two batches there. And once this is done, then it can then export into the system. It actually will does take a, a fair amount of time to actually do the redstone. So I'll bring you back shortly once we've got everything ready to combine for hypochlorous. Now, I don't know how much hypochlorous we're going to need overall. So I thought we'd just do the first one manually. And I'm just going to grab all... Oh, could I not grab it out of there? Really? Oh, it's got hydrogen in it. Ha, I can grab it out of there. So we've got 10 uh, buckets of chlorine and we've got a mercury bucket. So one... And that chemical reactor hopefully should have been ready by now. Yep, we can just pop this back out the back. And then we just want to go around back. Uh, do I have a hole here? Yep, pop back here. And I'm just going to put this uh, temporarily here. So there's our chemical reactor. And there we just want the hypochlorous. So if I've remembered right, it's 10 and 1. Good. And 10, wow, 10 buckets of water. And that's actually quite a bit. At least for this stage of the game. I may go and borrow that uh, infinite water source from outside. Let me just go and grab that for a second. It's being used, but uh, I've got plenty of the resources this is generating, so I don't need to worry about that just yet. There we go. There's our dense water source, and we'll just put that in play and have it provide stuff to our chemical reactor. Let's put it on the front. Yep, you're providing water. So if we just pop in mercury and if we pop in chlorine, once that gets to the right amount, it should automatically process that up into hypochlorous acid. And uh, yeah, we'll just make one batch rather than set it up automatically. We'll we'll see whether we actually need it. Well, in fact, let's just see what we actually need this for. 
What is it going to let us make with it? Well, we can, we can take it back apart again. Not that I particularly want to do that. Uh, no, because we get less chlorine out of it. Okay, so chemical reactor. Oh, well, well, we can make salt water within it. And not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I suspect it's this route because as part of that same quest chain, we're being asked to make ammonia as well as hypochlorous acid. So for both of those, we're going to get some water back out. And we're going to get chloramine back out. And chloramine is going to head us into through another chemical reactor um, to 1,1-dimethylhydrazine. That sounds explosive. Uh, all I could be wrong. <laughs> Have been known to be. So yeah, we'll see what the quests actually open up once we get to that point. Uh, I'm just going to need one bucket to actually sort this out. So I'm going to have to put this back in the system somehow. Um, there you see, I've already got the methanol. And then yeah, it tells us what we go for. Chloramine, just this as we said. But it will also, uh, at least for the ammonia, will also go towards dimethylamine. Okay, fine. So we've got to get to those two next. This will take a little while to fill. Oh, no, nope, it's done. <laughs> when I say a little while, I mean no time at all. And uh, let's get rid of you and just you for a second. I'm going to need the chemical reactor back again in a minute. But I just wanted to empty it so that we didn't have any uh, issues while we're doing the quest stuff rather than the automated uh, production chain or whatever we need to do for this. So uh, hypochlorous acid, let's just put it all in the system and just grab one bucket back out because we need that for the quest. Quest, come on, there we go. Hypochlorous acid and we'll just pop that back in the system. Good, fluid storage. And now we need the, well, first of all, let's just take our Omni pennies. Excuse me, my voice is going. Okay, as I said, we've got the Omni pennies. We'll probably get more rock salt out of that. And then we need to make ammonia as well. So hydrogen and nitrogen combined together to make ammonia. Easiest way to get nitrogen is to centrifuge air, which will require to build an air collector. Now, we did also get a comment saying you probably should switch that equipment downstairs. The one that's currently generating uh, oxygen, I want to say. Whoops, wrong thing. Uh, here. Yep, currently generating oxygen. You might want to swap this to be air instead of oxygen and uh, it would be going in here normally so we can do that just fine um, that doesn't mean we need an air collector anyway so if we're going to have to make it for ammonia then we're going to have to make it let's just see how oh, you're going to be a pump aren't you Ugh, air collector so basic air collector is two pumps <laughs> of course it is ah <sighs> okay i will be back shortly Okay, here is our centrifuge. I've just borrowed the one from this place. I'm just going to put it back here and I'll just put down a cable because uh, this is just largely going to be automatic. I'm just leave this run for a while. So basic air collector, let's pop it down. That's already going to start collecting air. You can see at the top left, but there is no user interface for this thing. So we need to actually select it to be output to the left. So that should start it up. It has. And this is now going to centrifuge air. We're collecting air quite quickly at this particular point, which is nice. And we're going to get that in this fluids area once it starts processing. So out of that, we should get two fluids. We should get hydrogen and oxygen. Now, fluid export bus. Oh, I don't have an input bus. Let's just make an input bus. Uh, fluid input bus. Yes, hopefully we got everything we need. It looks like it. I'm going to manufacture everything and then we'll import both hydrogen and uh, and the nitrogen. Uh, in fact, hang on. Was it hydrogen, nitrogen? Uses nitrogen and oxygen. Sorry. So oxygen is going to go into the system as well and we can use that elsewhere. So it's nice that for every 10 buckets of this, we get four buckets of nitrogen ish and one bucket of oxygen uh, where the rest of the air goes. Who knows? I mean, carbon dioxide, anyone? That would be nice, maybe. Maybe that's overpowered. <laughs> Regardless, uh, here we have it, and it's available in the system. So, well, it, it will be available in the system very shortly. So let's just grab that bus. Hopefully, you should have crafted. You have. And let's go and pop it back here. And then um, we need the output to the top first, don't we? So let's just select that there. Tell this to auto output the fluids. And pop it in. And connect it up. Well, we've got... <laughs> Lots of different ways to connect it up here. And I'm going to move these outdoors once I get enough mass, mass amounts of cable going. But this is or should already be emptying. Yes, it's already emptying the nitrogen. Can seem to do two different ones of those at once. Mm, that's actually something we can change. There is a card 
that uh, I think it can deal with two at once. Mind you, this may not be a it may not be a problem. It may want to empty the nitrogen. We'll move on. Yeah, it moved on. You can craft a card in here that opens up more spaces for it to do more than one thing at once. But uh, we don't have to worry about it, I don't think. So that should mean, yep, our fluid collection is starting to build. We've got hydrogen, hypochlorous, mercury, methanol, nitrogen, and oxygen. And we dump the oxygen downstairs for the, uh, the plastic production. And nitrogen we can use. So... Ammonia buckets. So for the ammonia, again, we can go with something simple to just get us the quest done. So we need hydrogen, three buckets, and nitrogen, one bucket, to make four buckets of ammonia in a chemical reactor, which I just nabbed in my inventory again. So we can pop that down again. And uh, I don't have spare buckets. No. Uh, in fact, I can if I just dump these into the system as well. Do we have spare? Yeah, we have spare, so let's just uh, make sure all these are empty. There we go. And that should give us all the ones we need. So we wanted hydrogen. Uh, well, ugh. it's going to make me fill them one at a time. I guess I could put them in uh, in this fluid tank. I've already got this one with hydrogen in it. Yeah, let's actually just do that. And that means I just need the nitrogen. Catch the nitrogen. <laughs> there we go. And we'll just dump the rest of the hydrogen. It doesn't really much matter to me. Got it basically renewable now. So 16 hydrogen, or we can just reclaim it back. And uh, one nitrogen, I think. Wasn't that it? Ammonia. Does it need a um does it need configuration as well? It does. Yep, three to one and program circuit of number one. So circuit 101 tier one circuits are ready in the system. Nice to see. And there we go. Number one. Ready to go. Is this going to be medium voltage? Have I forgotten that it's medium voltage? <laughs> uh, yes, it needs an advanced chemical reactor. Okay, 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 fine. Let's just grab that ingredients back out. Nothing wasted because we've already got um, ability to just grab it all back. Do I have an advanced chemical reactor already upstairs? I don't think I do, but I should be able to craft one if not. So furnace, polarizer, engraver, cutting machine, electrolyzer, macerator. No, I think the, is there a is there an advanced one outside? Yes, there is, but I'm sort of using it. Yeah, I'm sort of using it. I'm going to craft another one. <laughs> I'm going to leave anything that's automatic. I'm not going to uh, basically take those away. So let me just craft that. I'll be back in a second. Okay, now the system knows how to make these automatically as well as everything else. Uh, we can just pop this back in. So we'll just pop in you and the hydrogen and our circuit and off you go. We can grab the hydrogen back just because we could do this just once manually. And that can come out of this and we can just grab it and put it into the system. We don't have to put an, uh, we don't have to put an import bus on this. We can just nab it. Where are you? Yeah, there's our ammonia, or at least our manual ammonia for the quest. And let's pop that into our system. Hopefully we have a space. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> okay, so craft me another 1K drive, please. Yep, go. I need a 1K drive to be able to put this down. I guess I could probably use a bucket on this on the ground. Uh, that And a nice thing again with it, for that being at the top. Maybe that's just for all gases. There we go. I'm going to pop that back. And grab that back in our inventory. So now we've got ammonia complete as well. And that leads us on to the two other liquids. So and that will then take us to hydrazine. That sounds like rocket fuel. Um, yeah. Anyway, it requires dimethylamine and chlor uh, chloramine. Uh, both of those, let's just see, uh, just a review. We need ammonia and methanol. We can get both of those going. And that is in a medium voltage chemical reactor. We can probably get that done really quite fast, actually. Because we already have, both, well, not both of those, but we have one of those. Let's just get the hydrogen and uh, we can dump that in the system. I need to build a dense energy cell so that doesn't happen. But we need to be able to get rid of stuff in the system. <laughs> it doesn't have enough power to buffer that, basically. Uh, that's fine. Let me just grab the 1K drive, first of all. It should be nearly done. Yeah, there it is. So 1K drive. Make sure we have enough slots available for fluids. Uh, there we go. 
And that should start filling up with other stuff. So what was it again? What are the quantities? Can we just grab a bucket worth? Yeah, we just need methanol. So we can grab two buckets worth. That's fine. Um, methanol. Ah, I've got to grab it in one bucket increments. And we've already got the ammonia. Let's go and grab that and get that one done. So I suspect we're going to need a lot of this rocket fuel, though. If I remember rightly, it's needed for those micro miners, and uh, they need it as one of the resources. So this is going to have to be a full chain. But for now, we can get it going. So methanol, methanol and ammonia. Yep, that's going to process and we'll grab the ammonia back. And then that's going to make, uh, well, more than we can probably handle. But uh, we can get dimethylamine from that. And then the other side is chloramine. So let's grab that as well. Ammonia and hypochlorous acid. How handy. We've got that already. So dimethylamine, we could just use a bucket for that side. And the other side, what I'm probably going to do is just actually get another fluid import bus. It just make it so much easier if I just dump every type of fluid into the system. I'm probably going to need to craft another MU driver too to actually handle all these. But it just means, you know, um, easier to deal with longer term. So fluid input bus, and yep, we can craft any of that. The only thing I can't craft any more of is interfaces. Well, first of all, there's no CPUs, but second of all, remember I batch processed all those robot arms? Yeah, I've used them all. So I used 16 of them so far in making just interfaces. So if you're going to do that as well, you're probably going to want to train the system as well. It's running out of patterns, but uh, we're getting a larger array of different things that we're actually just adding uh, over time and of course you can see already what i've been doing um bus we have one already so let's just go and dump that in the system and uh, let's get this done so let's pop you out here and uh, let's get you on fluid import done done i think uh we need to set one of the output sides oh no we don't no, that's fine. It'll auto out, but it seems so. That's fine. Uh, and now we just need to finish that off. So I can go and grab the output from the system, and uh, we should be okay to go there. So let's just have a look. Which one was it? It wasn't the chloramine. It was the dimethylamine, which we've already got. It seems so. Chloramine now just means me to get. Uh, once I click on the right thing, ammonia and hypochlorous, and we can get one bucket of each. So uh, ammonia, we've got withers. And hypochlorous, we just have to find it. So let's just actually filter. Hypochlorous. There we go. And we'll just dump that in there as well. And then we should be able to get that finished, which will lead us on to the final liquid, which is the hydrazine. Um, I'm almost sure that's rocket fuel, but we'll see in a second. So that's an ammonia. Get the ammonia back. Chloramine, and I can just grab a bucket of it. Should give me the quest. Yep. Which leads us on to finally the hydrazine, which is rocket fuel. <laughs> okay, one more dimethyl hydrazine, which is going to be, uh, I imagine, just the, those two previous things. Yeah, dimethyl dimethylamine and chloramine. And of course, I've got that in my inventory, so I should probably should have kept the other bucket with. But uh, yeah, we'll just grab it from the system. Uh, dimethyl, there won't be much of it. Um, dye? Yeah, dimethylamine, there it is. And finally, let's get that liquid done. I think it's say finally. There is rocket fuel as well, but uh, let's just, well, we can't tell what the rest, well, we can go through J, yeah, I suppose. Let's just get those combined. And that's going to take a while, maybe. Can we already see what rocket fuel takes? Because that's going to complete. It's going to take us to rocket fuel. So let's look up rocket fuel. And that is... Um, has no recipe. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do we make it then? Is that just converted? Or is there another... Oh, there is another rocket fuel. There's advanced rocketry rocket fuel. And there's Greg Tech rocket fuel. Okay, so oxygen and dimethylhydrazine. So hydrazine and oxygen makes rocket fuel. And that's in a mixer. 
yeah it seems like one of those things that you probably just don't want to mix like that but okay i guess it'll work so we just need one bucket of oxygen and one bucket of uh bucket of dimethyl hydrazine one second and there is our three buckets of rocket fuel so we just grab that with one of these and we should be done pop that down and that should be the quest that's all this right hand side done and importantly with all of that you get quite a lot for this last quest you get two omni quarters so more than enough to go and get yourself a lot more rock salt if you need it regardless it's going to take us into fuel loading now this is uh, not going to be this episode but it is heading us towards micro miners i'm sure so you need a fuel st fueling station and um a linker okay so fueling station is going to be high voltage tier we've not got to high voltage tier yet so that is a bit of a blocker Shouldn't be too much. Yeah, it's all the same ingredients, stainless steel. So next episode, we're going to get to the high voltage tier. We need to pop down over here, go and get this opened up, which shouldn't actually take very much at all, given that it's um, just a high voltage machine casing, which is just stainless steel plates, which I've already made a lot of. In fact, uh, the only thing we've not got there is a gold cable yet. We haven't made gold cable. We can't make it with a wire mill. We have to make it with an assembler. Okay. So that shouldn't be a much of a challenge, but we should be able to get to high voltage. And I haven't even upgraded all these machines to medium voltage yet, so maybe we should think about that. If you've got any ideas about that, if you've been doing rocket fuel or anything else, feel free to put in comments down below, along with all your usual advice about how I'm doing things inefficiently <laughs> and how I chose the absolute slowest way of... Uh, there was a comment saying, I chose the absolute slowest way of distilling stuff from like fermented biomass and stuff like that. So, yes. Yes, I do occasionally make the odd mistake. It's one of those things. Anyway, if you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you next episode for more Omni Factory. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.